All right, so the big game gave us a brand new look at the upcoming Indiana Jones 5 or Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny. And throughout this video, we're going to be touching on the new sequences that are shown here, how it might be tying into the rest of the film, some Easter eggs, and why this honestly is the best de-aging I've ever seen in a movie. There may be some mild spoilers as we tie these new scenes into the plot and characters we already know about. But grab your fedora, satchel, and whip that like and subscribe button as it helps us out. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm your host, Jared. The short round of heavy spoilers. Now let's get into the new Indy 5 trailer. You, have we met? My memory's a little fuzzy. Are you still a Nazi? So this quick TV spot surprisingly gives us a decent amount of new footage and how some of this is actually going to tie into the supposed synopsis that was released a handful of months ago, apparently taking place in 1969. Nice. This will see Indy and his goddaughter Helena Shaw, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, getting into all sorts of scrambles with ex-Nazis who have been hired by NASA during the Cold War to beat the Soviets to space. They have an interest in the moon landing program, however are said to have ulterior motives, wishing, and I quote, to rectify the world and make it a better place as they see fit. So don't be surprised if director Mangold and Indy take this thing to actual space. Yes, we need to go to space! But this new spot seems to be involving some time jumps, which Mangold did mention in an interview would kick off the film stating, I wanted the chance to dive into this kind of full-on George and Steven old picture and give the audience an adrenaline blast. And then we fall out and you find yourself in 1969. The audience doesn't experience the change between the 40s and 60s as an intellectual conceit, but literally experiences the buccaneering spirit of those earlier days and then the beginning of now. The flashback opening sequence in question here seems to be the train sequence that starts everything off, with Indy and Toby Jones' character of Basil watching German planes swarm the skies above them. It jumps back and forth here in this TV spot, but I solely want to focus on the flashback footage first. Indy seems to have rescued his buddy Basil, as you can see them casually walking to the train. The train is sporting a Union Jack flag and some tanks and other military equipment as cargo, more than likely a military transport. This is soon taken over, though, by the Germans, specifically Mads Mikkelsen's Jürgen Voller. Voller looks to need Basil for something before a de-aged Indy just socks him in the face. Now, the de-aging here looks incredible. Even, honestly, even better than the first trailer. Awesome, I love it, but also explains why this movie's budget is close to $295 million. This is 1969. <laughs> that amount of money doesn't even exist. <laughs> Moving on, the meeting obviously goes awry because of the punch, and German planes begin firing on the train transport. Another shot of a de-aged Indy hiding behind some of the train's cargo we can see some lettering of ERR, which was actually a primary German organization in charge of seizing and destroying Jewish and other cultural properties in occupied countries during World War II. This is similar to the book-burning scene in The Last Crusade. So it looks like the Brits have kind of reclaimed some of this cargo, and potentially the Dial of Destiny is what Voller is looking for on this train. Again, this sequence more than likely opens the film in the 40s as we then transport to 1969. Voller and Indy meet face to face after a couple of decades, and even though Voller is now working for the good guys, he still very much is a Nazi working under guys. His character is loosely based on Werner von Braun, who was a big player in the US's role in the space race, having helped develop the V-2 rocket for the Germans. He was working for them in World War II, but then was recruited after that by the U.S. as an engineer to help with their space ventures. So it seems that there's going to be a lot of who's actually on whose side throughout this movie. Bowler's Have We Met line seems to be in line with him keeping a low profile on his earlier days and start a new life. But Indy doesn't forget so easily, and it looks like Boyd Holbrook will be kind of working with Voller, essentially his right-hand man and muscle throughout most of the movie. 
It is cool to see how these two kind of similar meetings play out while a younger indie is just quick to pop in this guy in the face. This 60s indie is like Roger Murtaugh in the Lethal Weapon series. Oh, I'm too old for this Again, the space race and the moon landing of 1969 is going to play a large role in this as we can see Indy being chased by Holbrook's character during the Apollo 11 ticker tape parade in New York. This took place on August 13th, 1969 and was done so in celebration of the moon landing. We then get our first look at John Reese davies returning as the beloved Sala from Lost Ark and also The Last Crusade. Hopefully there's a nice kind of friendship scene between the two and then a send off as we then hear him yell, give him hell to Indy as he uh, goes off. Give him hell, Indiana Jones. The action kicks in as we see a desert like rickshaw chase and rickshaw isn't the only Shaw as Indy is trying to rescue Helena Shaw from the other vehicles. The reason the two have crossed paths could potentially be because this is Sala's daughter and Indy was asked to help her get in or out of the scrambles that we see here. The trailer ends with Indy and Helena aboard what looks to be a Heinkel HE-111 German fighter plane, punching out a couple of Nazis as then they skydive out of the plane. What are you doing here? Rescue you! Hang on! There also appears to be a more modern for the time private jet tailing the fighter plane, and with Indy questioning why Helena's there, it could be the other way around, where Helena was sent to save Indy using this private jet, and then the desert motorbike rickshaw chase happens after this. Because the island that they're falling on looks to have kind of a small city on its landmass. The ending feels very Keanu Reeves in Point Break, and I'm really digging what we've seen of Indy 5 so far. With Mangold mentioning the flashback influences that he wanted to showcase, Combined with the one last time vibe of the 60s indie, I, I'm digging this. Of course, this is a quick teaser. Maybe we missed something, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on Indie 5. Is this shaping up to feel like the original trilogy? And what about those de-aging effects? That stuff is scary real looking right now. And I'll let you know, we're currently running a competition, giving away three copies of Wakanda Forever on the 15th of February. And all you got to do to get a chance of winning this is like this video, make sure to subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on Indy 5. We pick the comments at random at the end of every single month, and the winners of last month are on screen right now. So if that's you, message us on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, be sure to check out some of our other big game trailer breakdowns, either The Flash or Guardians 3. But with that out of the way, thank you for your constant support. I've been Jared. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and peace.